good afternoon. I'm Chef Nome Musa and welcome to Norman and Friends. Okay, so I'm live with all my friends in Europe, in UK, Netherlands, uh, soon to be Germany as well. Uh, yeah, so we live every Thursday uh, and then for 60 minutes, we can inspire you cooking two dishes, two simple dishes. Uh, mine is going to be more, a bit of a Malaysian, a bit of a Southeast Asian, uh, something really simple. And then of course, uh, we will upload the recipes for you as well. So for my recipe today, I'm going to tell you which... Um, which website or which uh, Facebook page that you have to join to get the recipe. Okay, so um, just to uh, remind you, if you're watching, uh, do let us know where you're watching from. So we would love to hear, well, last time we had someone watching from Jersey. Uh, yeah, from Jersey, from Korea, if I'm not mistaken, for even from Tokyo as well, or even from Maldives. Yeah, I remember. So do tell us where you're watching from. And I can see that, uh, well, this is my uh, second month actually to cook with along with the friends. And uh, for in May that we can ha we're having like many more uh, friends uh, that joining me. So uh, the friends that have been cooking with me last month, they are all coming back again to cook with me. So yeah, so it's all exciting. And then so you can imagine like uh, throughout the year, so you're gonna have so many recipes for you to cook at home. Okay, right. So don't forget to tell me where you're watching from because now I'm gonna invite my friend in the south of France, Nick Wong. See, see what these cameras. You need to flip, flip your camera, Nick. Uh, can you see me? Yes, I can, but at the moment, you're the other one. So <laughs> you need to flip your camera. So, I need can you hear us? So, Sorry, you... yeah, so you need to flip your camera. Uh, when I say oh, flip, it's horizontal. That's it. 200 yeah. portrait. Okay. Yep, that's better. Hello, Good. that's me again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nate, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. It's sunny, so I'm outside having a coffee. Yeah. Why are you having that? I couldn't hear you, you very properly. So you can't hear me very properly. Uh, right, well, so... Hot uh, coffee. Oh, it, coffee. It looks sunny, but actually it's got... Come, come on inside. Okay. So um, I think we saw a bit of a background there. Perhaps you want to tell the audience where, where you are at now. I'm in saint javet mont -Blanc. So basically oh. we are at 800, 800 meters above sea level, but closer to 900 actually, a bit higher. Wow. So, so yeah, we're in saint javet uh, not south of France, we're in the Alps. We're closer to Switzerland, actually. Great. And then this is like a, a ski resort, right? If I'm not mistaken? It is It is a ski and summer resort. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, but not COVID times. It'll be pretty packed here. Everyone's going are skiing. Not, are you not cold? So, yeah. are, you not, are you not cold? Like, <laughs> it's supposed to be freezing. I am cold, out, actually. But okay, I want to show you. Before, can we, can we, before we continue. Hey, Nick, 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 before you go in, can we see uh, one more time the view uh, outside your hotel? I mean, I can see like the uh, the mountains just now covered with snow. Of course you can. Yes. So on your let's, have a look. let's get back outside. It's a bit cold. Oh, wow. But I've got my coffee. So that is the highest mountain in Europe. That's Mont Blanc. You can see oh, a bit okay. of it. Yes. It's, you know, and that side is fine. That's a nice one as well behind. On the north side. Wow. So that's, yeah. Yeah, we're just mountains everywhere. So considering we're almost a thousand meters above sea level, you can imagine it's quite high up. So see, see, can, is yeah, he does it, 4, he does yeah, I can see that uh, Nick doesn't quite, quite appreciate the mountains because living in the Netherlands, there's no mountains here. There's no hills because I love climbing and walking up the hills because when I was in the UK, it's like I did that a lot in the Peak District and Lake District. But here, yeah, I, I, again, like, uh, it's always like... Uh, other ways how to, you can get healthy by cycling or running. So Nick, um, yeah. So what do you want to do now? Just go, go. You go back inside to to the kitchen now, because we I don't will, want. To play. I will give you a tour. I mean, you have to yeah. use a bit of imagination because yeah. Let's this is going to be our restaurant. Let's uh, do that. Obviously, so as you can see, outside is quite French. Uh, but yeah. Inside, we've done a bit of deco. Try to go more minimalist, more zen. So mm -hmm. that's meant to be. The bar, long bar, Italian cooking. Uh, we're, we're going for a zero waste, zero plastic, pretty organic uh, Great. concept. So, as you can see, there's some pretty organic soap here. Donkey soap. It's good okay. enough for the pan, good enough for us. So, good, good, good. Come on. Uh, for everyone's watching, I mean, um, Nick's going to run through, I mean, tell you more about himself after this, but what he's doing now, he's just like uh, showing his beautiful hotel there, okay? So we're going to talk a bit more. Okay, go on then. What's that you have there? It's, uh, it's got a nice lamp. So oh, we can't okay. afford really expensive stuff, so we have a lamp instead of expensive paintings. <laughs> <laughs> that is very cool. And that's my kitchen. I'm just going to go right in and get prepared. 
Yeah. Nice. So I'm in my station. Okay, so now we can hear the echoes. Okay, like what we're gonna do now. Okay, so we swap the camera now. So this is another camera for Nick. So can you hear me much better now, Nick? Yeah, it's um, I'm less cold now, which is good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So keep yourself warm, okay? Because you have cooking to do after this, right? So before before we start uh, getting to know Nick, I'm just gonna read out all the wow, all these like, wonderful comments. Nick, you won't believe like how many people are watching, like so many people, and then they're watching from Minnesota. Hello, Connie. Okay, from USA. Irene from Seoul, Korea, right? And then uh, <laughs> and then we have like uh, I can't even remember. It's pronounced the name. Someone from Kazakhstan as well watching okay so yeah. and then we have elaine watching from winshoten i've got it right this time so uh in the netherlands and we have anshulin watching from kl again keep telling us where you're watching from this is what really inspires because uh we love cooking for for all of you so hopefully that um you can uh, replicate or you know cook our recipes again after this okay right let's get to know my friend this time uh nick okay so nick do you want to tell us like how actually you ended up to be in the one of the nicest places uh, in in Europe, okay. <laughs> so if you want to tell the orders then. Uh, uh, honestly, I uh, I came from Ipoh, so it's quite similar. It's a very mountainous area, <laughs> and also a lot of good food. So I was born in Ipoh, Malaysia. Until I was seventeen, I moved to UK to supposedly study medicine, but uh, I would be a bad doctor, especially in um, So I ended up working in finance in London. Yeah about seven years. So, yeah. and now I run a hotel in San Jose because the idea was I wanted to initiate more Asian people to come and ski in this area. So, uh, and then COVID-19. So I've started this uh, Asian, modern Asian bistro in San Jose because I feel uh, it, it's interesting to introduce uh, Asian flavors to, to the French people here because there are quite a lot of international tourists in normal times but uh so that's the concept behind it and also a big part of it is also we, we try to be a uh, zero plastic and zero waste that's one yeah it's a very good it's a very good concept i mean how many years actually you live in london and then uh and then how many years actually after you moved to to this beautiful place i've lived in uk on and off for about 16 years 16 right so i've just moved in last year com uh permanently because i, uh, I had a baby recently so okay. I think a lot of the move, a lot of our career ambitions are because of our children, right? Yeah. So, so basically, you just, you just want to get away from all the buzz, like a busy uh, London city then. And then so you chose somewhere really strategic. So, um, and again, for anyone who's watching, I mean, in case you're, well, you're wondering, uh, so Nick owns this hotel, right? So how many bedrooms do you have then? There are 13 bedrooms. Yeah. Uh, and a new restaurant. Yeah. So, this is why, uh, you know, thank you for inviting me because, you know, this is where we connect on the food, food side. I mean, Malaysia yeah. is very underrated still, but... Uh, this, I, I mean, yeah, to be honest, you're doing an amazing job because uh, you were introduced um, by Alina. Alina, I've been knowing her for years, very nice lady who works for Tourism Malaysia. Uh, she's based in Paris, in the Paris office. Uh, Paris office. And then uh, she then introduced me to Nick. So because we're planning to do something like a, like a probably, well, we're still, pla oh, we're still planning to do something, but it's supposed to be a secret. <laughs> so we're not going to tell anyone. But that's something that you need to kind of, you need to follow Nick on his social media. Okay. So again, uh, Sandy's going to um, um, put the, this, make it scrolling. Yeah. You can see that all these social media and all that. Okay. So to find out more about these projects, the secret projects okay at the moment it's confidential so but we're gonna well there's something okay sorry i, <laughs> I think i put him on the hot spot okay let's get on with cooking now okay <laughs> so um, what are we cooking today then it's uh what i want to say this is my first stream i mean it's, it's quite crazy i don't do zooms i don't do anything so thank you for having me and thank you for being patient with me yeah. so today uh i'm gonna make something very french and asian at the same time um, we've got, I'm going to make a, a guilty pleasure of mine when I'm up at night, I, I feel a bit depressed about the whole COVID situation. I make this yeah. for myself. Really? So it's a Roblochon uh, dumpling. So Roblochon is a local cheese. I'm going to show you. 
So I'm gonna come closer, Julie. Okay, yeah, come close, and then we can. Uh, so that's the local cheese we have. Yeah, it's what they use in raclette, so okay. it's very, very light. But obviously, if you want to use it at home, uh, you can use cream cheese or substitute whatever you wish. You know. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm gonna make a cheese dumpling with dumpling. Okay. With prawn as well. That's right. great. Okay. Uh, so what we're gonna do now, um, just to um, before you start cooking, I'm just gonna just uh uh. So Elaine asks you why uh, where you come from originally. So do you want to tell Elaine? I'm from Ipoh, born Ipoh. and raised in Ipoh. Went to a Chinese school. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Ipoh. Okay, so Elaine, there you go. So how often um before before COVID, how often did you go back to to Ipoh then? Uh, I try to come back to Malaysia once a year. Once a year. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that's very common for Malaysians. We we very the the family bonding is when very. It's cold. When it's yeah. cold. <laughs> so obviously you haven't been back for a couple of years now then oh, yeah <laughs> so and then uh there's a connie asks uh, about the address of the hotel so connie if you want to find out about the hotel go follow um nick on his social media uh and then there's a website as well that we're gonna upload uh make it scrolling after this okay let's get um nick to cook now okay um yeah. so what we're gonna do is gonna bring the screen up make it uh wider not mine, so he's okay, good. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. <laughs> Sandy's at the back, <laughs> just doing all the <laughs> amazing job at the back. Okay, Nick, hit the when you're okay. ready. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna make a uh, mayonnaise from scratch. Because <laughs> that okay. be I want to make uh, a gochujang. You know gochujang is like the red pepper and uh, and uh, Red bean, uh, black bean, red bean paste thing. Oh, so okay. Paste okay. So it gives it a bit more kick. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's something spicy then. Something spicy to go with cheese. I know, I know you sound crazy, but uh, trust me, it's gonna be amazing. So let me just one egg yolk. Mm -hmm. uh, and a dollop of mustard. I can see Nick, you have a rice cooker at the back there as well, right? Yeah. So that's the Malaysian thing. <laughs> I won't be able to run my business without the rice cooker. Yeah. The most important investment ever <laughs> in this kitchen. Okay. Uh, you have that mustard, is you? Can you, do you want to see this up close or what do you want to do? No, it's okay, it's okay. I think uh, we, we all okay, yeah. Crack on. Because I know your this is probably going to be a lot more complex than mine, so... No, actually, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Okay, sorry, <laughs> not me. <laughs> so let's uh, let's do the close up of our uh, Nick. Okay, there you go. So we can see it better now. Uh, unfortunately, we've lost his uh, voice. Let me see. Could you not hear me? Oh yeah, you can hear me. So. Mayonnaise, very easy. So just one dollar of Nick, mustard. We need to do something because we can hear the echoes. Uh, so let's turn off. If you close the uh, the one, yeah, the, that close that one, and let's do the uh, the worktop one only, the camera, because otherwise it's going to be quite annoying because uh, we can hear the echoes. So we can see that uh, Nazrin watching from Cape Town. Assalamualaikum, Nazrin. Hope you're well. Sharina, I will ask uh, Nick when can we all visit the hotel again because I simply can't wait because uh, you can see that the, the scenery is just amazing. There. Can you hear me? So I just have to whisk. Yeah. Okay. 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 It's a lot of work, but it's going to be worth it. So as you whisk, you just keep adding the oil. And Normally, it's a two, sometimes it's a two person job. So it starts to thicken. Okay. So it gets to a consistency where, and it's one of those things where mayonnaise you think it's so hard to make, but actually, once you're not making it, it's quite easy. Yeah.
Okay. And what do you think, Norman? Does that pass? Yeah. Sandy, can you do anything with the, the echoes? Okay, there you go. Okay, this is better now. Um, so we only have one camera from Nick. Hello? Nick? Yeah, we, that's good. This is good now. I can't so, hear you now. Yeah, you can't hear me now. Can you? Hello. Hi, hi Nick. I can hear you. So, okay. Right, let's, uh, what we can do is just uh, bring, take out Nick and then bring back him in. in. Sorry about these technical issues, okay? So, uh, because we're trying to get to <laughs> to remove the echoes. Right, we're gonna bring uh, Nick back in now. So Nick, can you hear me? Hello, I can't hear you at all. You can't hear me at all? Uh, yep, I can hear you now. Okay, good, okay. Let's just use this camera. Yeah. So that's, that's the mayonnaise done, so it sort of flows nicely. Yep. I'm just going to mix the kochujang in. Nice. So the nice, I don't need. Yep, that's mayonnaise, all right. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to set that aside. Okay. That's set aside. So now okay. I'm going to tackle straight up. I'm going to do the filling for the dumpling. Mm -hmm. So chopping board. This is probably the quite one of the more important tricks. Putting a cloth underneath the chopping board <laughs> so it doesn't move. That's good. Yeah. I see the other camera is, is no longer there, yeah? No, no, it's not. It's just this one. So this is okay. So no echoes at all. So we're just okay. good. Um, we only need to sit one later. I can see that Elaine, she just said that she's been following you on IG already. So which is good. So you got, um, you're going to have many more followers after this, yeah? I just need you to follow me, Norman. That's all I need. <laughs> so no, we want to... That. Yeah. So the entire uh, cheese was about 500 grams, so that's 250 on the half, 125, yeah. so, so we have about 60 grams here. Mm -hmm. I normally like to go uh, equal amount of meat and cheese, so I don't want to be, you know, get a good. So 60 grams, each prawns is about 8 yeah. grams. Oh, it's, I feel quite generous today and I feel quite hungry, I haven't lunch yet, so that's what I'm going to make. The equal amount of cheese and prawns. Then you just basically mash it up. But before that, I'm going to prepare the spring onions as well. Because there's spring onions, there's cheese, there's some ginger. Um, that's about it, really. And I just season it with some uh, vinegar when I, when I feel extra hard looking. Yeah. And these are especially hard. There's a lot of Asian flavor there, which is good. Yes. So cheese, because uh, in the dumpling, it will melt. So, you know, it doesn't really matter how big you cut the chunks. And the important thing is, you know, it sort of fills up the entire entire dumpling. Sure. And we're gonna deep fry it, so that's why it's a guilty pleasure. Okay, okay. So, right. so that's done. So now I just need to the cheese is gonna be quite hard to cut, but you know, if you have cream cheese, you can just basically measure it in a spoon. Yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna do as much as I can because in the end it's gonna melt anyway. Yeah. I'm not too fussed about the presentation. Because the taste is more important, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not for the restaurant, but you know, it's a, it, like I say, it's a midnight snack, so I'm not too fussed about it. Yeah. Um, do, do you serve this uh, at your restaurant? We do the kimchi version. Um, because we can do the kimchi version because uh, it's still, because we can only do takeaways, right? So I think things like this are meant to be uh, eaten fresh when it's yes. hot, piping hot. That's true. So that's the uh, that's the reason we 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 roll it out, you know, when we can open. So what's the situation like in Netherlands now? Is it getting well, better? Everyone's getting panicking uh, for the third wave, but um, I can see that. Well, well, I think it's just the media is getting panicking, but the people are be well, behaving 
like when I say normal, like I still having a, you know, wearing a mask and everything. But yeah. um, because of the weather, uh, yeah. well, apart from last week when it was snow, well, apart from a few days ago when it was snowing, uh, everyone's like out and about now. So we had a very beautiful weather like last week. And that's when I had a barbecue and all that as well with my sister and family. So yeah. Yeah. So what I've done now is I'm just going to mix it up. I think that that's yeah. going to be quite a lot of dumplings, actually. <laughs> so let's take the whole thing, put it in a bowl. Yeah. With my spring onions. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I've been always wanting to try your curry pot recipe. When I have the time, I'm going to go with it. Well, next time, uh, next time I visit you and I can, uh, you know, teach you and also your kitchen stuff. I'm happy to do that because that's my mom's, uh, my late mom's recipe. So I've been teaching a lot of people how to make that. So um, I think uh, beauty things like that, I mean, should be shared. And then yeah, so but I'm sure I'm like uh, it's gonna be lots of viewers like uh, happy to uh, to set a date and visit you when you open. So I've got some ginger as well. I'll just pre mince it. It's just to save time. And, and then, yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna bash it up a bit, just so that uh, I don't I don't get a dumpling with just just the uh, prawns, just the cheese. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but you know. So we have W uh, W W. <laughs> WLW Tong, uh, watching from Hong Kong. What are the other Asian influence dishes in your restaurant, Nick? Uh, yeah, so sh is it she or he? Uh, yeah, so someone's asking what other influence, uh, Asian influence dishes in your restaurant? So um, at the moment, uh, well, obviously we try to incorporate everything that's interesting. So I try to be quite, quite adventurous for the locals, testing the boundaries of how spicy they can take. So we yeah. use a bit of fish sauce. We use a very, very, very uh, typical Chinese. You know, we're gonna we're gonna put Chinese vinegar in this because you know prawns without Chinese vinegar is you know my mom will kill me if I if I put that on the table. Okay, I think I better <laughs> let me get on with the cooking first before reading out any questions to you. Okay, so let <laughs> because there's one uh, cheeky uh, <laughs> comment from Elaine, which I'm gonna read later. You have to be patient so you can see him in full, like uh, in 10 minutes or so, okay? <laughs> you see me in full? I hope not. <laughs> so just a bit of pepper. I'm using, uh, by the way, th th this answers the question of uh, WLW Tong as well. So this is uh, Sarawak pepper. So oh. Sarawak pepper. So it's, it's, it's a bit more savory than the usual pepper we get here. Yeah, it's a good quality. Can you see? So I've done the. Oh, it's a bit. I've done the done things beforehand. Mm -hmm. There's one of these. Okay. And I, when you work with it, it's better to cover it with a moist something moist, just so it keeps the. It's easier to work with and it doesn't crack. Yeah. So it doesn't get dry, is right? Yes. Yeah, just basically. I'm just gonna make four for now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna season it with. Bit of, I think you'll like this. I use a lot of uh, minya bawang. Okay. So, uh, is that shallot oil? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to mix that with my hands. So, we've got the sauce, dipping sauce already ready to go, which is good. So, now I can't work it. I can't work it. Well, not I can't hold it, but I see it. So I think you're I'm not saying I'm a good chef, but all chefs like to have a very clean top, very, very organized. Stop being so humble. Huh? On, you, own, you own a hotel and a restaurant. It's like, stop being so humble. It's like, uh, you should be proud. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so, this is the part I'm probably repeat, repeating a lot. So, I'm not sure how you can see this, but how I like to do is important thing. I've got a pot of water. Yeah. Just to keep my fingers dry, uh, wet, and another one to keep it dry. So to start, just hold it between your index and your thumb. Pick whatever one. So that's a that's a nice sort of portion. Yeah. Put it in the middle. I'm gonna get everything. 
So that's quite a nice sort of uh, portion. Draw the hands. So now here's the part. You're just gonna seal it, and it's nice. It's, I'm not sure. How, can you see that? Yes. So basically, it's like a crescent. So I just do a crescent on the top. And here we go. So just a bit of pressure on the fillings. Just fold it quite quickly and press it. Okay. Not my best work today, but uh, as long as it doesn't open in the fryer, I'll be happy. So water is important to kind of seal uh, the yep. dumpling sheets, yeah? Okay. There we go. So that's quite a... Beautiful. What are you talking about? Like, that's beautiful. I'll make a better one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll make one quicker. Right, the so water so content is quite important. So this will fry, this will melt the cheese, and the cheese will sort of uh, cover the, the, the prawns, and the pepper kicks in. So it's a very... It's a very non-traditional way of, uh, you know, doing the dumplings. Cheese and dumplings, is, is, that, is that anywhere? Do you have cheese and dumplings in any cuisine? Maybe the Koreans, huh? The Koreans use a lot of cheese in their, in their cuisine. Yeah, um, well, the Koreans... Uh... Yeah, they, you eat, uh, you eat, uh, you eat uh, spicy noodles with, with cheese, no? Do you do okay. that? Let's ask, um, who is it now just watching from Korea? Irene. Irene? Irene Park, so she's watching from Korea, and then see whether she's um, she can tell us a bit more about it. So let's see. Hello, Irene. Do you eat your ram, ram, ramyeon with uh, cheese? That's quite a that's that's a thing, no, in Korea. <laughs> no. I think it's okay. so. I'm just gonna make three. Yeah. So again, it's the last one. Make it a good one. Yeah, this is basically, I do this, and I could do this normally without lights at night, because, you know, you just want a yeah. nice snack. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good for your waistline, but... How, uh, how many do you, can, you, can you eat at one time? Well, because... Depends, on, think, stress, yeah. depends on how many cases of COVID that we have here. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I really agreed with you. I mean, that's, yes, they use lots of cheese. Um, so in Korean cuisine. So that's quite interesting because we are thinking about doing quite a lot of uh, Korean flavors here because of how, you know, it's, it's quite an easy way. We've got really good cheese here, obviously. Yes. And uh, pretty much I can find all the different ingredients here, the Asian ingredients. So there's a lot of potential to do something quite interesting. Okay. Yep. So I've done three dumplings. Can you, can you do me a favor? Can you bring it close to the camera and show that dumpling uh, close to the camera and then show it to all our viewers? So the key is you, you want this, you know, that, that shows that it's not machine made. Yes. So this is handmade. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. Right. Let's give lots of like a uh, thumbs up and love to Nick then for doing it, for having done an amazing job. Uh, so, okay. Well, he's not done yet, but he says, gonna, you're going to show us how to cook this, right? He's going to put a fire. Yeah. <laughs> So right now, what you can do is—is is this camera on the laptop, Nick? This is my laptop, yeah. Okay, can you can you show your face because Elaine's been cheeky, say that she can't see your handsome face. Uh, <laughs> it's getting blush now, Elaine. There you go. Want to see Norman? <laughs> Elaine, you better give him lots of our love, then. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, there I so probably mentioned that you can see all the most part of the, 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 the kitchen. Yeah. It's done away with plastic. I must so say I'll, take the ways where, I'll take the ways are all, you know, you yeah. know, wooden hulls, you know, you know, recyclable. Um, everything I've used, I've used uh, inox, I think that's called stainless steel, inox, inoxiable. Yeah. So that that's, um, that's the fry heating up. So. Yeah. It's a bit of a, but yeah, I've not used, so basically the idea is I don't, I don't use on our daily touch items, for example, uh, all the equipment we use, we try not to buy anything that's plastic. Nick, Nick Sharina just said that do your French accent. So do you have an accent now? 
Então... French, <laughs> Say something in French. I'm sure that you picked up like a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you uh, want to uh, if you want to hear accents, uh, you go to Uncle Roger, uh, You don't come here. Uh. <laughs> There you go, nigga, make it go, you know. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> but, anyway, Nick, Nick, I just want to point out to all our viewers that uh, the skin, the dumpling shit skin, you made it yourself, right? I can see that you have a mold there. Um, so, the dumpling oh, shit. Sorry, I didn't quite get you. The dumpling shit, uh, you made it yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. It's just flour, you just roll it and you sort of sprinkle some water and you keep it. But otherwise, Good. you can buy. I think you can also buy. You can probably buy easier in in Asia. Uh, yep. There's some pre-packed ones. Okay. Uh, well, you know, you, the good thing you, about these dumplings are, I personally like them because you can make them, mm -hmm. freeze them. Yes. So I like to do it when, I, when there's nothing to do, or, or you know, when you just need some therapy. <laughs> <laughs> just wrap like a lot <laughs> put in the freezer, and if you if you want to fry it or you yeah. want to steam it, you leave it to warm up in room temperature before cook it. So, yeah. Before cook it. Good, okay. And also, uh, people are going to have this recipe, right? So you're going to upload uh, this recipe? Yeah, I'll okay. Look. okay, so you so can yeah. bring Okay, good. I've moved the camera to the fire. Move it in the, in the oil, okay? Okay. Yeah. Whatever you do, Nick, just make sure that your beautiful, handsome face in the frame, okay? So because otherwise you can upset Elaine. So and other ladies as well, okay? So, <laughs> okay, there you go. I'm just going to put this in. I'll, I'll come back to that towel. This cooks. How are we doing with time? So, um, I'm sure there's going to be many more questions. If you have any questions, uh, so for the viewers, if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask, type up all the questions, okay? Or give thumbs a like to Nick because he's done an amazing job there. Uh, by the way, Nick, my yeah. question to you. Um, so, can you, instead of frying it, can you also steam the dumplings? Cheese, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I mean, yeah. well, we can try it when you're here, <laughs> but because, uh, okay, it's fine now, just watch the time. It's supposed to be two minutes, two and a half yeah. minutes, three minutes. Uh, okay. I like to cut it a bit, a bit brown. Yeah, it's fine, but it will be fine there. So, so, uh, so yeah, I think steam, we mainly we steam with meat because then you get the juice of the, of the, of the meat. Uh, so it permeates and then it, it's more like it's like the Chinese uh, uh, xiao zi, bao. so you want to keep the moisture the soup in there and uh, the, the, the challenging thing in France is the French they don't really like their food piping hot um, one, one of the reasons is like you know they say oh if you give me something piping hot I burn my tongue yeah. my whole meal is ruined so that was the uh, that was the idea so you know which I mean, it's nice to stay true to the tradition and you know how we how we eat it. Um, but I think for, to really, I'm sure you have more experience than me. But to have uh, to really get into the French market, you have to adapt to their sort of style. You know, I would love to give them a nice big bowl of you know Hainan chicken rice or something. But I think they'll look at it. Oh, is it not debone? You know, it just it just that sort of not barrier. It's just that sort of uh, knowledge that you have to be mindful of. So we try to make things quite presentable. You know, uh, I agree with you. That's, that's one of the challenges. Like uh, when I first introduced Malaysian cuisine in UK, right? Yes. I have to adapt. You know, I mean, of course, uh, being spicy, too spicy, like a Malaysian standard, is not uh, wise. Actually. Okay. Yeah. But there is a challenge, no? I mean, do you actually uh, dumb down your recipe, dumb down your traditional recipe for well, market, you no? Know? Two, two things that I only uh, adjusted like my recipes, uh, only the, the level of spiciness, the chilies that I use, and second is uh, the oil. So the rest is, is the same, yeah. Um, how it's going to be another video. Mr. 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 Oh, say that perhaps you should consider offering the famous Ipoh chicken noodles with an European stiff, uh, twist. So yes, you know what? Because uh, Ipoh Hovan it's so good. I I don't think I can do it justice. I don't know what is it. I mean, I go back to Ipoh. I still have it. You know, it's still a comfort food. And there is no way. I, I mean, I've not found anyone who can tell me like how to make it exactly. 
And when, when we make it in Europe, it's either too thick or too dense. It doesn't have the chewy, you know, smooth flowing flavor. I mean, I would, I would offer it, but it won't be the way I like it. So, you know, my, my priority now is just to make enough money to stay afloat, basically. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll do, I'll make things that, that the French people like, the international tourists like, and then maybe I can indulge in doing the way that I like it to be. You know, I think that's quite, quite challenging thing to do. When you first opened your hotel, I mean, what kind of a clientele do you have? Mostly French or Europeans? Uh, one second, I think my company is already. So, yeah, I mean, when, when the first open was actually October. So, the first thing we did was do our renovation. So, mm -hmm. at the time, uh, we only started offering a takeaway and we do delivery. I think we're one of the, one, one of the only ones in San Javier to do deliveries around this area. Yeah. Um, there's still a lot of uh, local, local uh, trade here. Um, obviously, without the tourists, it's without the English tourists, without the international tourists, you know, we, we, are, we are mainly servicing the local domestic uh, market. Okay. I mean, um, so I think I've read somewhere that um, uh, Malaysian TV crew that went to your hotel for filming before. So uh, it's getting more. Oh, that was that was not my hotel. That was a, actually there was an astro program. Uh, it's called Churi Churi Chuti. So, okay. um, so what they did, they shot, uh, because our location is so close to Italy and, uh, and, and uh, Switzerland as well, so they did, uh, so every episode was supposed to feature a country. So using this base, we covered the French episode, we did the Swiss, Swiss episode, we did the Italian episode. So, uh, so it was a very nice crew. It was actually, I, was, I hosted them at the chalet um, before, before, I, before I started this project in the hotel. So yeah. Right. 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 Oh wow! Yeah. You can see that's nice and crispy. Can you, can you, like a... Nick, why is it hot? Okay, okay. Uh, why is it hot? Can you just show uh, how you know like the cheese inside? Then let's have a look. So, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Let's try not to burn myself. Let's see. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Wow. This little melt, you can see the beautifully cooked prawn and a bit of spring onion to give it a bit more texture. But people usually, I think the traditional Chinese, we use uh, the chives or the cabbage to bulk it up. But yeah. because I think having, you know, any other vegetable that's too substantial will take away the flavor of the cheese. So I, I use uh, spring onion just to give it a bit more chewy texture, but still at the same time, I'm not going to wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Okay, so um, so are you are you done now? So it's like I can start with my uh cooking now. Yeah. Mm. So okay, we get well while I'm cooking. So you can uh, maybe show like a uh, what presented on the on the plate with the with the sauce and, and all that. Okay, so towards the end we're gonna go try our food. Well, <laughs> again for you. Okay, right. Let's uh enjoy <laughs> it's smart work okay uh right okay so it's my turn now to cook um so well let's give a uh, lots of thumbs up and then a love for for nick there thank you june just asked do you have a girlfriend nick i think uh june you need to be you need to be careful that because i think he, he just said that he has, uh, I'm married with child. <laughs> you know, you just looking at me now. <laughs> right, Nick, while I'm cooking, you can read all these beautiful well, comments, cheeky comments, all from, from all your admirers now, all your fans, or you need oh, yeah, on Facebook. Ah, okay. You can read it's on the side. Now. Okay, right. Let's make. Uh, let, let, <laughs> I'm gonna start cooking now. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to make this. Um, well, actually, for Malaysians, we call it uh, the chicken of the 
okay? But that's what I'm going to use for the base. But for the topping, I'm making very uh, kind of well, simple, more creative side with the. So first, I'm going to prepare the base, which I have here, the flour. Again, okay, the recipe may be in my uh, close Facebook group, Cooking with Chef Norma Musa. So if you have a Facebook group, so you can, um, so if you have a Facebook, you can uh, request to join my uh, Facebook group, okay? So I have the plain flour here, and then I'm going to add in turmeric powder, ground, uh, ground turmeric. So I just need half teaspoon. So the plain flour is only 125 grams. So that gives about 12 portions, yeah? Uh, like a mini tart or mini pudding, you call it. So half teaspoon of ground turmeric. So here I have Himalayan salt, it's about half teaspoon as well. And then I have water here. So the water is like a 200 ml of water, just cold water is fine. Just uh, show in front of everyone. Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna transfer the camera to a better view. So I'm gonna have an egg here. And where's my so now I'm just gonna beat this. Okay, uh, one last thing I'm gonna add in, just a, a teaspoon of olive oil. I mean, some people like, uh, well, for Malaysians, like uh, they add like coconut milk. I'm trying to make it nice and simple. So now I'm just gonna whisk this. this. So it's gonna be kind of a nice thick batter. Let's see that. So I've already set the temperature, uh, turn on the oven uh, with the temperature 180 degrees. So we just uh, preheat the oven to that temperature because uh, baking this is only take about like uh, about 15 minutes only, yeah. Because uh, again, it's depending on the size of your mold. Here I have this uh, silicone mold with a 12, uh, 12 uh, well, how is it? 12 holes. So you can see that nice and thick batter. And what I'm going to do now, just uh, going to stick this. If you have a measuring jug, use a measuring jug, okay? So I usually don't have this one in my kitchen, in a temporary kitchen. So I'm just gonna sift this. Right. I don't like to waste anything. So just gonna use the like this. So this is the base for your mini tarts, okay? So savory mini tarts. Right. Let's try. Just study up a bit. So there you go, nice and thick. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna well I'm just gonna have a bit of a taste with the uh soaking up for the season it's well season. Yeah, it's good. But ne next, I'm going to bring this. Now, this is one tip that I want to share with you. Um, if I can see that this silicone uh, kind of mold being used quite a lot, so it's kind of soft, so it's best for you to put straight onto the uh, baking tray, right? So at least you don't have to move around because otherwise it's going to be, yeah, so your, the, uh, your mini type is not going to be even, okay? So what you need to do, I need to brush a bit of oil 
or you can do it with butter as well. So I'm just going to get the kitchen paper. I made a, I made a dessert without the oil and it, it all got sticky and it was quite hot. So that was that's actually a good tip. It is, yeah. yeah. So you can uh, brush with butter or oil. Yeah. I made a panna cotta on that tray and uh, didn't. Oh, yeah, panna cotta. Uh, nice panna cotta with pandan and coconut. So nice. that's what we serve now. That's what we serve in the restaurant as well. Yeah. Oh, take away. Okay, so that's ready. Now I'm gonna pour this. So make sure that you only pour like half full of the um, into the bowl. I'm just going to carry on, keep doing that very quickly. So it should be enough for like a 12 portion, this one. This is actually really nice for um, dinner party. Like if you're having a party, well, once COVID is over, hopefully, uh, you can have like a party with a, uh, this is like a snack, a beautiful, nice snacks. Just like, uh, same like yours, uh, Nick, the dumpling. Can't wait for a party, actually. <laughs> Yours is more like a supper, late, late supper snack, I think. Yeah. I'm just going to tidy up this bit. And I'm going to scoop up. Because otherwise it's going to... <clears throat> right, I can see that this one is quite shallow. I'm just gonna put some, make sure it's nice and even. So basically, like uh, the base is, this is actually very similar to kind of a pancake, but it's a different way of uh, preparing it, baking it. So you can always just like uh, make like a pancake, but I think this is more fun. It's more like a bite size. Gonna make a mess again. So normally for uh, for Malaysians, like what you, what they do is for the <clears throat> they have this mold that made of a like a metal mold, right? So sometimes like a like a star shape, or you can have like a do you know like a Nick Bahulu? The well, some people like call it madly. Bahulu, uh, they have the Bahulu shape as well. So, <clears throat> so but mine, I just like to make it nice and easy. So I'm gonna put this in the oven for five minutes. And then I'm gonna take it out. And then start putting all the toppings, okay? So for the toppings, <clears throat> which I'm gonna run through, let me just put on the timer first. So only five minutes that we need for the first, uh, to get the batter to kind of set. So, but it's not like uh, fully cooked, but it's just nice and set, okay? So I'm gonna make my kind of mini tart as a, like a seafood, or with the seafood theme. So I have here the smoked salmon. Uh, this is like the anchovies. Now this is anchovies in oil. So it's not like a Malaysian style crispy anchovies. But again, if you have crispy anchovies, you can do that as well, yeah? So I have your smoked mackerel. And then here I have the cherry tomato. And to have a bit of a green, I have here uh, spinach, which I've already blanched in hot water, just uh, to get nice and soft. But again, you can always use other type of vegetables if you want to as well, like uh, kale, yeah? So you can do that. But again, it's best to cook it first, uh, so it's really nice and soft, yeah? Because if you put straight into the oven, it's gonna kind of burn it. All right, so and that, uh, for the topping. Uh, so again, I have here prawns, but again, with these prawns, uh, I'm not cooking them to begin with, uh, because I'm gonna put in the oven for like five minutes and then it should be cooked after that, yeah? So this prawn, like what I've done here, peel and I still cut at the back of it like this. So I'm gonna open up to create a bit of a presentation for it, yeah? And then, uh, just, so for the uh, kind of a topping, so I'm gonna chop this uh, coriander, so finely chop, and also I have dill that works well with uh, salmon, uh, smoked salmon, yeah. so I'm gonna put that on top. And being Malaysians, we like it spicy. I have a chili oil to put on top as a yeah. topping. 
Okay, so that's what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do. And also, I mean, again, you can be creative. Uh, today I bought this a uh, pesto sauce. You can put a pesto on a sal uh, salmon if you want to as well. So you can do that. Yeah. So it's nice to kind of have a, have a bit of moisture actually, because uh, so anything like with the uh, the sauce, you can even use like uh, the mustard, uh, the the mayonnaise sauce that you you use uh, for your dumpling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Right, let's uh, wait for a few minutes and then uh, see what <laughs> when is the best time to visit. So Irene, just uh, there's lots of comments there. Uh, some of it go well with this. Have you read all the comments, uh, Nick? I don't know, my Wi-Fi is not so good. <laughs> so every time I go to Facebook, it lags. So I'm trying to move around to get a good connection. But yeah, I'll reply one by one later. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me read out uh, one or two for, for you there. So Sharina just asked, do you think sambal will go well with this dumpling? Yep, formulation. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I would love to try it because, yeah, um, I think the, the greasy is good. The greasiness would be nice. A bit of oil, a bit of flavor. But then you uh, find the composition of the cheese and the sambal, obviously. Irene just asked, uh, when is the best time to visit, actually, your hotel? Oh, we open all year. I think the nicest time, or well, if you don't ski, I would recommend uh, autumn or summer. So autumn is really nice, it's really quiet, and you know you can actually walk up all the way to the base camp. It's, it's beautiful, and you see the colors. Um, it, it's a really, really convenient place to be. I mean, you can come any year, any time in the year. Yeah, actually, it's a, you, you're open all, the, all year round, right? If I, what, when all year so round, yep. yeah. So, and then for, for people who love skiing, I mean, like, when is that actually the best time to go then? For skiing, it starts from Christmas all the way to well, pretty much now, uh, middle, mid end of April. Wow, wow. It's the mountains are still full of snow, yeah. It was snowing yesterday. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> but again, it's like, uh, that's when uh, I guess your hotel is going to be fully booked, right? So... Uh, I hope so. <laughs> I mean, I can't wait for you to visit, you know, bring all your friends. I'll take you skiing, I'll take you walking. I'm not so sure you show me how to go for the you good. <laughs> the balancing, because like uh, here, I remember like when it was very cold, when the all the water, the lakes kind of uh, frozen up, uh, people yeah. were uh, skating. So uh, yeah. not, not for me, <laughs> it's like, I'm not very good with that. So Present. let me see. Along. So I've got like a, about less than a minute and I'm just going to, what we're going to do now, I'm just going to slice the tomato, tomato cherry, and I'm going to show you how to make a nice topping, okay? So because again, there's a technique how to make sure that the, uh, the all the uh, ingredients is, doesn't sink in into your uh, tarts, okay? So it's very important because you want to make sure that the batter kind of a hole to make sure that the, the topping at the top uh, kind of like uh, not sinking. So I have your tomato, as like if you like uh, spicy, you can always just slice some chilies and then put on top. I know Malaysians do that when they do this uh, uh, chara below. Let's have a look. So 15 seconds, and then we're going to take this out. I like your position. I'm sorry? I like your time management. Your position, your time management, it's so professional. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time's up. Let me see whether it's properly set. So I'm gonna take this out. Let me just put. Ah, okay. So it's still a bit, uh, still a bit runny. So I'm gonna leave it for another like a uh, three minutes or so. Yeah. So we can chat a bit anyway. I know we're gonna get the over a bit over time because uh, we're supposed to finish everything in 60 minutes. But again. It's going to be really quick because I really want to show to the viewers how to kind of uh, arrange it nicely on the um, uh, so on this like uh, putting the, the tarts, yeah. So make sure that they look okay. I'm gonna. <laughs> this is what I prepared earlier. Okay, it's gonna look like this. Wow. Okay. Let me just get closer so you can see it better. See. So it kind of uh, it kind of stick. You can see like uh, the thickness, right? And then, so it's like a bite size. And then so the fancy canapé, yeah? Very yeah, fancy, yeah. very nice. So this is not kind of done yet because I'm going to do the uh, the final bits, which is the, the oil. The drizzling, uh, yeah. yeah. The drizzling and then, of course, uh, the top herbs as well, okay? But again, I'm just going to show you very quickly how to make sure that they kind of stick on the... Um, you can see that the prawns are all cooked now, yeah? 
see that. And the recipe will be again on on your on your page. Yeah. Well, um, so they have you have two options actually. I mean, the viewers have two options. The first one is going to be the first one is going to be well, if they join my newsletter, so they will get it on my newsletter. So for to do that, you have to go to my website, nomamusa.com, and then uh, there's a button for you to click to put your email address there. Yeah. The second one, you can join my uh, Facebook close Facebook group, uh, cooking with Chef Noma Musa, and that's where. I will upload my recipes and also this video as well is going to be uh, uploaded on my close Facebook group. Okay, good. Right, so let's have a look now. Let's see whether it's kind of set. Yep, it's almost there. Let me just put the camera back there so you can see it better. I don't know who's gonna eat all this because normally when I go live, Sandy's here in my like a you see the chair there? She'll be sitting there, like yeah. managing all the backstage. Like <laughs> but I have 24 pieces that who's gonna eat them? I'm on diet because I have to lose like three kilos. <laughs> send them over. Send them over. <laughs> Happy to do so. <laughs> If there's a delivery, okay, you can see that it's kind of set now. <laughs> God knows. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give out to all my neighbors. I think. I see when I say that it's set. Let me just try to bring the camera. So this is. Yep. Can see that. Can see that. It's still soft. Let me. Just, oh. I'll just drop something. But hang on. Turn it later. Right, let's just try to bring this close so you can see it better. Right, okay, so the trick how to make sure that is everything can kind of stay. So you need to kind of arrange it and then you need to gently press it. Well, because, uh, the batter is still a bit soft. And then this one I'm gonna do with prawns. And then the prawns kind of open up. And then you have the tomato. You kind of a uh, kind of a uh, push it in. Okay. So right, I'm just gonna do very quickly. You can see. And then the prawn. Okay. And then with the salmon. So I'm just gonna put like uh, on top like that. It's always like uh, when you do the presentation, always make sure it looks like a mountain. It's not like a Mont Blanc, but uh, just like kind of a heap, okay? Because it looks nice when you take a photo. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to... So I have here uh, the Saudi, uh, sorry, not the Saudi, the anchovies. God, I love these anchovies because it's nice and kind of a... It's something kind of like, you can taste like a sea water. Like, that's what I love about the Saudi. I said it's uh, anchovies. This one that they normally have put it on like um uh it's like a, on the uh, pizza. Yeah. Yeah, so I love that. So it's nice and colorful. Again, if you're gonna uh, if you're not gonna use seafood, if you're gonna use chicken, meat, uh, beef or chicken or so, I would advise you to cook them, uh, pre-cook them, yeah. So don't put raw on here because uh again cooking time is gonna be really quick. So you don't want to um don't do it like a, yeah, so cook your chicken, the chicken meat. Right, I'm just gonna finish off very quickly, so I've got. And also the vegetarian, yeah, so you can do that. You can do it with tofu, any vegetables. So, aubergine or courgette, or you call something called zucchini. You can simply do it with that. So I'm just gonna bring the camera, you can see it. So it's, it's nice and colorful. So they, got enough. So anchovies. I mean, I've, I've got all this. I bought this all from the from the uh, market. We have market here every Thursday. Okay. Oh, gosh, we have a market here in San Jose every Thursday too. Every Thursday? Right. right. 
Quickly show you. Wow. Yep. Okay. Now I'm gonna put in the oven for another like a uh, eight minutes, and it should be ready. Okay. So I can bring this here. So the one I cooked earlier. Hey. Do it this way. See. The view. So now I have here uh, chopped coriander and also chopped uh, dill. But first, I'm gonna do the oil. Well, when I say oil, the chili oil. This is my favorite actually, logama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's putting on on my dish. I will do that. It's better, isn't it? <laughs> so. So I'm not going to put all of them because I'm going to give up to my neighbors. <laughs> well, actually, Dutch people, they like spicy food. Not like yeah, it's not Indonesian uh, influence, right? So they're used to it. I, I, mean, I, I, I agree with you about the French people. Like uh, when I did the uh, promoting Malaysian cuisine uh, with Alina, actually, uh, she was there at the event. Uh, so I was organizing like this a cooking workshop. And yeah, so they don't, <laughs> they don't like chili at all. If they have a choice, they not they don't want any chilies at all in the in the dish. So I was teaching them how to make laksa. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can feel it because otherwise it's going to look yellow, yellow or creamy. With the only thing they they like sriracha. <laughs> That's why I have like because I think sriracha. Yeah, they use a lot of sriracha, but uh, yeah. you know the, the the portion of French people I know when I say spicy sauce, they immediately think about sriracha. <laughs> so with one of the salmon here, I'm gonna put uh, the pesto. It's good. Oh yes. And then maybe here. Yeah. So a bit of a so the pesto sauce, or you can make uh, with any type of sauces actually if you want. And I'm just gonna scatter the deal over. And there you go. So again, with the herbs, if you don't have the fresh herb, you can do with the just a dried herbs if you want to as well. Yeah. And there you go. Wow. Sandy, I'm not gonna eat them. <laughs> so it's yeah. I mean, how, how? I mean, the last question I have is, how do you pry it out from the silicon tray nicely? What is your technique? The technique is right. Well, flip it over. <laughs> what, what I did was like uh, I make sure that I uh, completely cool down everything still in the tray. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, just uh, gently like uh, we do like one first. Just make sure. I wish I can show you anyway. But the best thing is to do to do is cool it down completely first. Yeah. So um, then just uh, squeeze out because it's soft and then squeeze out uh, the. Uh, the puddings or even the muffin, everything. Okay. You just fold it basically, you just fold it inwards and uh yeah. Uh, do you pry it? Spatula? I'm sorry? Do you use a spatula to pry it or do you make any or it just quite easily comes out? Yeah, you can well for mine is because you brush it with oil, so it's easier okay. to come out actually. Uh Sharina just asked, is it better to use silicone tray or instead of metal? Uh to be honest, I prefer the silicone tray. Uh, the metal, uh, with the metal, I normally put like a, a like a baking paper. So that's what I normally do. Like I cut nicely, uh, just even for the small um, trays like this. So because they, otherwise I get so annoyed when it kind of stick to the trays. Okay, right. Are you ready to eat yours again? I'm gonna yeah. try. I'm gonna I've also try to plate it a little bit while 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 you were cooking. So I've okay. Done, I've done that. I'm not sure you can see it. Uh, no. So a bit of uh, sesame, a bit of black sesame, a bit of uh, sesame. Nice. Uh, so yeah, I like sesame. Nice. I like sesame oil. So, Make sure you take a photo and then upload it on your social media. And then... Yeah. Um, are you... Okay. <laughs> I can eat it. <laughs> right. Let me just uh, quickly take this. Oh. 
Okay, right, let's eat. Go on then. I'm gonna have the one with the salmon. There we go. Ready? It's be crunchy. It's like the, what, what's, what's it called? The trend out there, it's ASMR. Mm. Mm. You see the spring onion and the cheese? Oh. Mm. I like it. It's nice because um, I like it because the 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 batter, the, the bottom layer is not very kind of uh, too thick. So that's why it's very important. You get about just like a 1.5 centimeters, a kind of thick. So it's not yeah. Hmm. I didn't cook enough for myself. <laughs> How many did you cook? Just four. <laughs> I just made three. Just made three. Yeah. I think you have right? It took up too much of your time doing you the hotel, so I only made three for lunch. <laughs> okay, we've gone over by six minutes, but thank you very much, Nick, for joining me today. Yeah, I hope you have a good time. Enjoy. And you can see all the ladies like been teasing you as well. <laughs> you can read the comments again after this, okay? But again, if you want to find out more about Nick after this, you can follow him on his social media. And let's see, um, Sandy's going to start scrolling all this, uh, the Instagram. So you have, because you have two Instagram, right? One is for yourself and one is for the hotel. Okay. So you can see that. Yeah. So that's me. Yeah. And uh, we want to make a website where you can book the hotel rooms, et cetera. But okay. I think we have to wait for, you know, international tourism yeah. to resume. But uh, stay tuned. We're trying our best to put yeah. our Malaysian here. Yeah, so, uh, when you have a time to visit, please do come. All right. So, next week, I'm going to be joined by um, my good friend. Uh, again, in, she's in the UK, so from Manchester. I've cooked with her many, many times before. She's a beautiful lady with a, with a good knowledge about the nutrition, so what is good for your body and all that. So, that's something that you have to watch on Thursday next week. Okay. So, we're going to say goodbye now. Nick, is there anything that you want to tell people, uh, the viewers? Well, thank you so much for tuning in, and uh, I hope you learned something. I'm sure like, you learned something from this moment. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, and then thank you very much. So you can see that people watching from all around the world. So, um, so you're world famous now, Nick. Okay. So, but again, <laughs> so let's give lots of a chance, like and love before you go. So, and then thank you again for watching. Okay. Thank you. Then, uh, so again, yeah. So if you want to find out the recipes, so again, follow, follow my social media and all that. Also, uh, follow Nick as well. Okay. So we're gonna say goodbye now, Nick. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. -bye. <laughs>